There are over 1,100 shows here at the Edinburgh International Festival. They're reported by, what, 650 journalists and filmed by over 60 TV camera crews, witnessed on some nights by as many seven actual citizens of Edinburgh. In particular, though, it's the printed page which makes or breaks a show. Apart from anything else, it's the only tangible evidence the performers can take away with them to prove that they've actually been here. But who are these journalists who scurry around from venue to venue in a desperate attempt to beat their deadlines and trying to prove that the printed page, or rather the pen, really is mightier than the word of mouth? I've got the power. Everybody's a critic. We've got a thousand shows. No sort of ordinary punter turning up in Edinburgh is going to have any clue what to go and see apart from what um, you know newspapers or listings, publications yeah. or whatever um, um, direct them to. And so yes, I mean in this instance with this huge volume of work going on, I think reviews probably have an importance that they don't have at any other time in British theatre. And the funny thing is that you, you're not selective about which shows you fall asleep in. You can you can fall fast asleep in the first half. It's always the first half as well. Yeah. The first half of um, a great show and then um, stay awake infuriatingly through Letters of Sylvia Plath, part three. Whatever you're criticising, you have to try to criticise constructively. Your job is to try to see if you can make things grow. If you are criticising something adversely, it may be very funny to get your dirty word in, but it's in fact also extremely destructive. My lethal weapon's my mind. Up against the wall, and my lethal weapon's my mind. I think people are just so hungry for, for any kind of guidance at all, you know, to sort of get through this, that they, they will just listen to anything, basically. And certainly Scotsman reviews, I know, are considered by the groups, and I think with some justification, to be absolutely crucial. Yeah. And that's why it, the, the, the problem of them having to recruit such a big team of reviewers is a difficulty, because, you know, you're getting people who really don't do much reviewing for the rest of the year quite often. And, you know, their judgment may be as good as the next person's, but, you know, it may not. And it's very, very hard to have any kind of quality control on the reviewers, never yeah. mind the show. There's a, there's a great theory that goes around French performers that uh, many of the reviewers who savage them in the papers have been brought in from the Outer Hebrides somewhere who spend most of their time reviewing fish prices. W would you say that was true? No, in it's unfortunately very expensive to bring people in from the Outer Hebrides. The fares are really quite severe and very bad for the inhabitants. It would be a wonderful thing to get a very good number of people in from the Outer Hebrides because you, you would want, you'd have the an enormous advantage of a Gallic perspective, a new language, a different culture, judging the culture that yeah. they found here. What about the London critics? What, what do you think about them? Well, it's a good thing to keep the London critics on their toes. They come up here with a kind yeah. of, here we are in Ballyquebackwards or Auchtermachtery, to employ the famous phrase of some journalist whose name I forget, yeah. uh, and to tell them, in fact, you're at the hub of the world. This is much, much bigger than anything you're going to find in London, and you, the London critics, are on your trial. Now, a large number of them are coming through quite well, and because we are saying, you know, you're not the top of the world, then you're getting much better criticism from the London critics. Edinburgh's critics, some of them are rather like Edinburgh itself, rather stately and yeah. douce, I think is the word. Douce. Um, but, and London critics certainly arrive here with their pens perhaps slightly sharper, yeah. and that may annoy people. But I mean, going back to what I said about this is a show as much as anything on the fringe, I mean, there is a huge excess of criticism up here. We have to, we're entertainers as well, we have to produce entertainment yeah. and we have to produce things which are readable, otherwise who's going to bother? And I can't, I can't blame them. Yeah. So yeah, it, it gets vicious, it gets too sharp, but, but then equally no one seems to want us to stop reviewing. Yeah. That telephone will be a theatre company on the line yeah. saying, why haven't you bloody well been to see us yet? So just how far will people go to get themselves in the papers? No. Where's Malcolm Hardy? Oh, here he is. 
Oh, hello, hello Colin. Malcolm. No picture of you here, but uh, you got a great review in The Scotsman last year, didn't you? I did last year, yes. It was uh, probably the best review anyone's ever had, ever. How, how did that come about? Was it a particularly good show you were doing? No, the what? show was rubbish, but um, I wrote the review myself. Yeah, what, you, what, you got a commission from The Scotsman, or what? No, 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 no. no. Well, I told a full story, which has never been told before. Yeah, like, it was a scoop. It was a scoop. Yeah. Um, what actually happened, I was doing a show at a place called The Pleasants, yes. along with about 42 other shows. And after about a week, the Scotsman had reviewed 41 other shows and hadn't come to see us. Oh. And I was getting a bit sick of all this. So I sat down there with a performer called Arthur Smith. Oh, yes. And we wrote a review of the show that I was doing together. And then I met a real Scotsman reviewer mm. who told me how they filed their reviews. Oh. So I got it typed out in the envelope to the Scotsman's office after it all closed, gave it to the porter. Yes. And lo and behold, the next day, there it was. They published it. Malcolm Hardy shambles on stage in an ill-fitting suit looking like a debauched Eric Morecambe and initiates the funniest show I have seen in Edinburgh this year. Did that have an effect on your audience? Did you get lots of people coming? Full up from then on in, full yes. up. The point is that on the fringe, with the importance of reviews to people, the paranoia of actors mm. causes stories to be inflated to immense proportions. Yeah. I mean, apart from the famous one that you already had about the, the guy who wrote his own review last year, I mean, there are innumerable kind of apocryphal stories about various Scotsman reviewers kind of, um, you know, sort of, of sort of lying down on a row of seats in the front row and, and, and sort of beginning to snore loudly during performances. There was one famous account of how the, the Scotsman reviewer fell asleep in the middle of the performance, <laughs> snored loudly yeah. all through the first half and then just towards the end of the first half at some kind of climactic moment, staggered to his feet, said, where's the gents, and lurched out across the stage. Now, I mean, the point about this <laughs> I is wonder that, who that could have been. it may be true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was some years ago, but it may be true, and it may not, but the point is that the kind of paranoia yeah. of, of, of the profession faced by this fantastic competition for audiences and for, for good reviews is such that these stories kind of flourish like, um, yes. like Topsy. Well, there you have it. The critics are not all shinty correspondents from the Outer Hebrides, nor are they foppish posers up from inner London. They write bright, interesting pieces which are designed to help. At least I think so. I generally fall asleep halfway through the first paragraph.